Hello and welcome. This is John Hendrickson, Farm Viability Specialist with the Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This is part of a series of tailgate trainings on farm labor management. I'm going to be talking today about tracking labor on a diversified vegetable farm. I think this is an example of what I call purposeful record keeping records that you can use to actively manage your farm to increase profitability and sustainability over time. Most of us hate record keeping. We don't get into farming because we like record keeping generally. And I think a big part of this is that most of the time we're doing record keeping to satisfy others. We're keeping track of things to fill out our taxes for the IRS. We're doing things for a health inspection or an organic inspection, our food safety inspection, or for bankers because we have loans. So we're often keeping records to satisfy requirements that are laid down by others. And I think it's extremely important to both keep and use records that can improve your own decision-making and help you meet your goals as a farm business owner. That's not to say that those other types of record keeping don't have value, they certainly do. But in general, the information you need to fill out your taxes does not necessarily help you manage your business. Some of the most important record keeping is to gather information to help you understand your cost of production in order to actively manage your farm to be profitable. How much does it cost to produce a bunch of carrots? or a pound of green beans is the price that you're setting for that bunch of carrots and that pound of green beans covering your costs. The biggest expense on just about any specialty crop farm, diversified vegetable farms are certainly a great example of that is labor. The most variable expense from crop to crop is labor. The most critical factor therefore in determining crop profitability is labor because it's the biggest share. And unfortunately, it's the hardest expense to track because our farms are so diversified. We're growing a lot of different things. We may be marketing in multiple ways. It's very difficult to track labor to get the cost of production for that bunch of carrots at the farmer's market or that bunch of carrots in the CSA box. Here's a chart that shows the share of labor. Uh, this is a general, a general uh, pie graph some farms it's more, some farms it might be a little less, but it is the largest share of expense on a farm. And it's really hard. Uh, I, I've been a vegetable farmer myself. I'm not just speaking about this uh, from a university researcher perspective. I grew vegetables for uh, sales to restaurants for many years, certified organic. Myself, my sons, some hired employees, and I know how hard it can be to track these things. So I think it's important to set realistic goals. A mistake that some people make is that, oh, I need to track labor to understand cost of production. So I need to do track labor everywhere all the time. And that may not be realistic and it may not be achievable, certainly in the short term. So it's important to set up systems ahead of time, set some goals. What are we gonna track? How are we gonna track it? Are we gonna track several different crops? Are we just gonna focus in on one crop or one activity on our farm? And I think it's really important to delegate, have someone whose job responsibility it is to do this type of record keeping. That might be you or it might be someone else. And establish that as an expectation. Perhaps as an expectation for all of your employees that part of filling out their time card at the end of the day or the end of the week is with some specificity about what crops they worked on and what activities they did. And you can manage and refine those systems and expectations over time. As you develop systems and develop a routine, develop a habit, you can do more and more as the years go by. Some specific places to start tracking labor is to narrow it, hone in on really specific things that it's really helpful to understand the costs of. For example, do you know what it costs to produce transplants on your farm? 
do you know if it's cheaper for you to produce your own transplants or buy transplants from another farm? Focus on harvest and post-harvest handling labor only perhaps. Uh, that's actually the biggest share of, of hired labor and <laughs> thankfully it is because if you're not spending more the most time on harvesting and post-harvest handling, in other words, getting your product out of the field and getting it to market, um, that perhaps could be a problem. If you're spending way more time on weed control than you are on harvest, uh, that, could, that could spell a problem. And you can also focus on a few crops that you have a question about or that maybe they're a feature crop on your farm and you have this assumption that they're the most profitable crop because they're the ones that you sell the most of. Um, we've had examples of farms that have honed in on those key feature crops on those farms and have realized that, oh gosh, they aren't as profitable as we thought they were, or maybe they weren't even profitable at all. The biggest tip that I can recommend is to use the computer in your pocket. Most of us, not all of us, but most of us carry around these miniature, highly sophisticated uh, and powerful computers in our pockets, our cell phones. There's many different ways to use them to track labor. There's usually a voice recorder function or you can get an app to beef this up on your farm where you can make little recordings throughout the day as you move from task to task. It's eight o'clock, we're going out to harvest carrots. Maybe you could say there's three of us going out to harvest carrots. And then when you're finished with the task or you're moving on to the next task, you can denote that. Carrots are harvested. It's 9.15 and now we're off to harvest beets. At the end of the day, you can press playback and document the time spent on each crop. When I hired my first employee on my farm, I made it a requirement that you, my employee was not to just report their time at the end of each day, at the end of each week, but that they were to denote the amount of time spent on each crop. And this was actually my employee's idea that uh, I did not offer this as a suggestion, but she came up with this on her own to use her phone and do these recordings. She would go home at the end of the day, press play and fill out her timesheet on a day by day basis. One thing to think about when you're setting up any type of labor tracking system is the level of detail or the time increments to use. You can, you know, decide to get down to the minute or you can decide that, you know, the nearest quarter hour or 10 minute uh, increment is, is is good enough and that's usually enough specificity. We need to not let perfect be the enemy of the good. Before and after photos, uh, we're all, we all should be taking lots of photos on our farm for our social media platforms and our web pages. So here's a built-in system to track labor because every time we take a photo, it's automatically stamped with a time of when we took that photo. So we can go out it's the onions are ready to be pulled up and laid out in windrows. You can take a before picture. You can take an after picture. You might send this to customers to and interest them in what you got that week uh, on your on your website or your availability list. And you can also then use this uh, to remember. Oh, we harvested onions this week. How long did that take? There are all kinds of time tracking apps that you can put on your phone many, many different ones. Um, you can find one that works for you, that you like um, how it works, how it looks. Um, maybe have that be a requirement for your employees or maybe have them choose a time tracking app of their own. There's even one that's been created for vegetable farmers called Beat Clock that you might wanna check out. You can use your phone to set alarms, set reminders, uh, you can send emails, set up an automated email system to send yourself an email message every day, perhaps with a link to some kind of record keeping form that you've, that you've developed um, to help you remember to do this on a daily or weekly basis. Some people just don't like using their cell phones or don't want their employees to use cell phones. So there's nothing wrong with using paper forms. Some people absolutely love this type of system. Uh, the, whole, the old form on a clipboard that's hanging in the greenhouse or hanging in the pack shed wall, uh, or maybe you've got a 
a clipboard that's right there on your tractor or on your harvest wagon where you or your employees can make notes about how long it took to do something. One potential drawback to using paper forms is that it does typically enter or add an additional step in the record keeping process because most people want to then transfer those paper forms which can get lost or wet or you know anything can happen to those and get it into a computer system where you can analyze the data gather the data sum up the data and use it to make decisions a thing that i'm a huge fan of are the forms that you can use uh, either google doc forms or microsoft forms there may be other platforms that offer capability of making and using forms Forms are basically a way to set up uh, an entry, an easy entry system to add information to a spreadsheet or database. Super easy and flexible to set up. Uh, you can give access to your employees to input data as it happens, or maybe you want to limit that and only enter data yourself or have a manager or some employee whose responsibility is for labor record keeping to, to use that type of a form. And these types of forms have all so many different uses on a farm. Uh, you can record harvest data, you can use it as a field activity log, you can use it to take orders from customers, many different permutations uh, of using this. And so why not use it to collect information that can help you be a better, more profitable farmer. And side note, uh, this type of labor record keeping actually can have a secondary benefit for those of you who might be certified organic. Organic certifiers require a field activity log where they usually quiz you on, okay, when did you apply this organic fertilizer or use this organic pesticide in the field? And so if you're tracking labor by crop or by, by task, you've got a ready-made system to answer those questions when the certifier's on your farm. We sprayed BT on the broccoli crop on August 12th. And you happen to also note that it took an hour or however much it took. The certifier doesn't need to know that, but it's useful information for you. Here's an example of a Google Doc form, actually from my farm where I had four people working, put in the date, if unless it was the date plus the labor information was being put in on the same date that the, that the labor happened because these forms are automatically involved a date stamp, just like the photos. You indicate what crop you're working on, what activity you're doing, how much time it took. And then the data at the end of the year can look like this, where you've got those timestamps, you've got who did the work, you've got the crop, the time, the activity. You can sort this by person and do payroll. You can sort it by crop and get total hours by crop. Um, you can use it to track, you know, what to make plans for the coming year. Oh, our broccoli crop worked really well. I don't remember when I planted it. Boom, you've got the records. Help, helps you prepare for the next season and also gives you powerful insights on tracking the costs of production. So I'm not gonna pretend that this is easy. Many growers start with really good intentions and then the growing season happens, things get chaotic, things get hectic, things get stressful. You start dropping, you start not doing labor record keeping. Oh, don't. I'm too tired, don't have time to do it today, I'll do it tomorrow. Next day, another busy day, I'll do it tomorrow. That kind of thing happens. Best systems are the ones that you create in advance so that you're not creating the system on the fly during the growing season. Delegate, make it an expectation, either of yourself or of an employee on your farm or your spouse or your partner, or you know, maybe you've got a loved one that helps out on the farm, a grandparent, or maybe there's a child that could help with this task on your farm. But really important, steps to a profitable, satisfying farm business. Uh, this is really simple. One, start keeping records. Two, keep keeping records. 
we often have to do three restart keeping records and we have to choose one of those. It's really important. We need to understand our cost of production so that we are aware of whether our, the price we're offering at the farmer's market or the wholesale case of lettuce is covering our cost of production. Here's some additional resources. Uh, there's a tutorial on creating a Google Doc form that I've created. Uh, Veggie Compass is a system where if you are tracking labor, it's a format for putting that information into a spreadsheet tool to rack up all of your cost of production, not just the labor, but seeds and fuel and all the rest. On that same website, we have a spreadsheet to estimate labor costs by crop. Know Your Cost to Grow is another excellent program, somewhat similar to Veggie Compass, that walks you through a system to understand your cost of production. And this program has developed a series of really thoughtful, well done systems to help you not track labor every day for all crops, but develop a system to create some time studies so that you end up with a sense of, oh, if I'm using row cover on a crop, I know how much time it takes to put the row cover on, take it off. Uh, I know how much labor it costs to set up an irrigation system per bed foot on my farm. Uh, I know how much it costs to, how much time it takes to seed a 72 flat and then pot up, pot that up into four inch pots. Um, really thoughtful, well done system. There's some other things online that you can find uh, for record keeping systems and software. Uh, this is just one example from the Carolina Farm Stewards uh, with a system for tracking um, labor in a hoop house situation. Many other examples, too many to list here. Um, encourage you to seek out those types of templates and forms as you find them useful. So this again was a presentation as part of the Farm Labor Dashboard, a project of the University of Vermont with partners in several other states. You can visit the Farm Labor Dashboard for more information about managing, making smart decisions to manage labor in terms of hiring, training, all those issues. And if you have more questions about tracking labor, you can contact me, John Hendrickson at the Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems. My email and phone number are at the bottom of this slide. Thank you much, and I hope you found this useful.